What's another good metric of health and longevity? This cortisol to DHES ratio. It's something that I spoke about on a previous podcast with Georgie Dinkov. And you want your cortisol to be as low as possible and your DHEAS to be as high as possible. I think that if more people in the quote longevity space who are preaching fasting, caloric restriction or carbohydrate restriction or meat restriction, honestly shared their labs, you would see that their thyroid hormones are probably low. I know some people in the longevity space have to supplement with testosterone and androgens to even have normal sex hormones because they're calorically restricting so much. And they think that their cortisol to DHEAS ratio would be too high because the cortisol would be high and the DHEAS would be low. You can see here my cortisol is 12.5 random in the morning and my DHEAS, that's DHEA sulfate, was 142. To give a ratio of 0.084 for my cortisol to DHEAS ratio. If you're interested in literature looking at this ratio, I'll share this study. Cortisol, DHEA, sulfate, their ratio, and all cause and cause specific mortality in the Vietnam experience study. Basically, the authors say that this is one of the best ratios for longevity and predicting low rates of cause specific mortality and all cause mortality, and yet. I haven't heard anyone in the longevity space be willing to share theirs or talk about this ratio. So if you want to live a long time, keep your cortisol low and your DHEAS, which is an androgen, DHEA is dehydroepiandrosterone sulfate, keep that as high as possible. How do you do that? Well, you need to eat carbohydrates to do that because carbohydrates are a signal of abundance. Obviously, the quality of those carbohydrates matter. You need to give your body nutrients from meat and organs. You need to sleep, you need to get sun, and you need to have a slow stress life. I think the one piece of this that gets left out of a lot of people's equations is the sleep piece. If you're not sleeping enough or you're not sleeping well, your cortisol is definitely gonna be higher. If you're not eating carbohydrates, your cortisol is gonna be higher, along with the glucagon and the epinephrine and the norepinephrine. And it's very well accepted that cortisol is an aging hormone. So a lot of the interventions that people in longevity space recommend, whether it's caloric restriction or fasting, limitation of meat, limitation of carbohydrates, these all increase cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone. It's an aging hormone for humans. Cortisol to DHEAS ratio is going to be higher. All of those point toward increased aging, worse longevity, and yet they're in vogue today. So do the opposite of those things. Sleep, get in the sun, eat meat, don't fear carbohydrates, especially from fruit or honey, raw milk, or whatever source of carbohydrates you tolerate. Maybe don't overstress yourself in the cold plunge, guys. And maybe don't overstress yourself in the sauna either, but that's a subject for a different podcast. I'll just point out here, according to the authors, a higher cortisol to DHEAS ratio was related to an increased risk of death by other causes in the age-adjusted model. The hazard ratio was 3.11. That's a pretty significant. That's like three times higher risk with an increased higher cortisol to DHEAS ratio. You want to know what your cortisol to DHEAS ratio is, and you want to keep it as low as possible, which means giving your body signals of abundance. Things like meat, things like carbohydrates, things like sleep, things like sunlight, giving your body food throughout the day, not fasting. I'm not a fan of fasting. I've spoken about that in the past and not restricting calories. Obviously, some people will say, how am I going to lose weight if I don't restrict calories? And I will say this. The important thing to consider here is that if you want to lose weight, applying moderation and discipline is going to be necessary. But I think applying moderation and discipline to the amount of food you eat or when you eat it is the wrong use of your efforts. Apply that moderation and discipline to the quality of the food you eat. I think that there is no better way to long-term health and sustainable weight loss than to improve your food quality. What is improved food quality, Paul? It's things that your great, great, great grandmother would recognize as unprocessed meat and plant foods as you can eat. That is high quality food. The more high quality food you eat, the more full you will be, the easier it will be to lose weight. That is the way to sustainable weight loss counting calories, over fasting, over stressing your body, again, elevates all the stress hormones. That will lead to problems long-term.